In terms of catheter ablation of paroxysmal AFib, I think we as a community understand pretty well what we need to do, which is really to target the pulmonary veins, isolate them, and that treats the majority of patients with paroxysmal AFib. But when you get to persistent and long-standing persistent AFib, we know that isolation of the pulmonary veins treats a lot of people, but there's a substantial minority of patients, maybe somewhere between 30 to 50 percent, who are still have atrial fibrillation and need something else done. So what the RADAR trial does, it uses some new software to try to make sense of the chaos that is atrial fibrillation, to try to identify those areas outside of the pulmonary veins that are supporting or sustaining these rotors that, that uh, make atrial fibrillation keep going. And so what the RADAR trial uh, was, it was a prospective, non-randomized study that where we targeted these additional areas with ablation and looked at the outcomes. So this particular software allows the operator to take a multi-electrode catheter, move it around inside of the heart, uh, inside the left atrium, after the veins are isolated. And what it does is it stitches all of these different locations into one coherent map. And by stitching that, by using this approach, the operator has the flexibility to use the multi-electrode catheter that they can use and create a very high density map. And so what the software does, again, it stitches it all together. And that approach allows the flexibility of dealing with small chambers, big chambers, oddly sized, uh, sized chambers, et cetera, and uh, helps the operator to identify the sources. And again, the, this particular study was designed to try to say, okay, if you can identify them and if you ablate them, how do the patients do? How well does this actually work in identifying the sources? Because again, one of the big problems with, with trying to address this whole rotor problem is there is no ground truth. So the only way to know whether you really found a real rotor or some uh, fake rotor, we can call it, is to actually see the clinical outcome in these patients. So this particular trial involved four centers in, in the United States. It was part of an FDA study. We had about 60, just over 60 op, uh, patients. And the patients were persistent and longstanding persistent with the mean time of AFib of 13 months. And what we found was that these patients did quite well. The freedom from recurrent atrial fibrillation, flutter, or atrial tachycardia was 72%. The freedom from AFib was 83% at one year. So these results are quite promising. Again, this isn't definitive data. We now want to then take the next step, which is then to show that this is better than the control. So a randomized trial is going to be necessary. But I think this is very, very optimistic data uh, to provide the justification for a large randomized trial. Well, if this works as we are hoping it does, if the randomized trial is positive, then suddenly we have a much um, better way of identifying these extra pulmonary vein targets and would hopefully sort of uniform, it would make the practice uniform across um, physicians across the country and the world.